I just got back from one of the strangest trips I've ever been on. How strange was it? Well, anybody I talked to <laughs> the whole time I was there, everybody basically had one response and that was, why the hell <laughs> would you come all the way out here? So uh, yeah, that's a pretty good indicator that I was off the beaten path. And I would bet that anybody watching this, you've probably never heard of this place before. If you have, I'd be shocked because there's no reason for it to exist in your mind. And yet it's a place that I've wanted to go for close to a decade now. I've, I've been wanting to go to this place. It's been a bucket list item for me. So uh, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing, it's not this place, although I am unashamed to admit that I also love it there. And it's also not this place, even though this represented another bucket list item that I was able to cross off this year. No, this specific trip requires a little more backstory. So this is the story of how I wound up in Monroe, Louisiana. So to set the scene here, we have to go back about 15 years. Actually, the night of my 16th birthday. Unlike most kids getting their driver's license, I didn't do that. I instead got other gifts. Sorry, Alex, who had to drive me to high school every day until I was like 18. But there was one gift that I got that obviously has had a lasting impression on me. I got it from my brother. It was a video game and it was this video game. NCAA 08 football for the Xbox. Now, I'm not a huge football fan. I never really have been. There was like a period of my life in middle school-ish where I kind of followed the Chargers when they were in San Diego, when they were good. Uh, but outside of that, I've been mostly a baseball person my entire life. And I never cared about college football at all. Even when I was in college, my college team sucked. So, you know, never really cared about that. But for some reason, this game captivated me and I could not stop playing it. And with Xbox, there's this progression tracking system called Achievements. And essentially these are little side quests that developers can put into game that once you complete them as the player, you get little vanity points that you can earn. These points are redeemable for nothing. They have no use at all. Uh, and yet I have over 100,000 of them because I was obsessed with them for a little bit. One of the achievements in this game was called One Star to Six Star, and it asked the player to turn a one star prestige school into a six star prestige school uh, in the single team dynasty mode. So essentially you had to work up a really, really bad program into a national powerhouse. Obviously you have to choose a one star school to get started with this. If you start with a six star school, it's not gonna work. And there are only so many one star schools in the game. And if you have even a shred of a brain cell, you can maybe see where we're getting here. So alongside schools like SMU, Ball State, Western Michigan University, there was another school that kind of stood out to me, a one-star school that I thought I could raise into being a six-star school. And it was none other than the University of Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. <laughs> now a little history on the Warhawks, I think this is necessary. They were originally called the Indians from their inception as an athletic team until about 2006 when the NCAA passed new restrictions on team names towards indigenous populations that could be deemed abusive or offensive. And so when that happened, they had a school-wide poll to choose a new name and they settled on the Warhawks. And as an aside, while I do like the Warhawks name, I think it's, you know, aggressive and, and powerful. When I look at those other names that they were up against in the finals, they could have been the Bayou Gators. That's so much better. I wish I was following the Bayou Gators. So just a little more history on the Warhawks this time, a little more on the results side, the one star rating is very deserved and earned. Um, throughout their history in the Sunbelt Conference, dating back to 2001, they have gone a combined 90 and I think it was 163. <laughs> so 90 wins, 163 losses. That's good for a 355 winning percentage. Not, not very good. And in those 21 seasons, they have managed to scrape together one single winning season. In 2012, they went eight and four, and then they went to a bowl game and they lost to the Ohio Bobcats 42 to 14. <laughs> and I would know because I watched it live. And you wanna know why I watched it live? Because after playing with them in NCAA 08, 
and NCAA 10 and NCAA 13, which I also have a copy of, but not with me currently, I fell in love with this team. There weren't even achievements in 10 or 13 to take a one-star school to a six-star school, but I picked them anyway because I like the team, okay? Do you get it? I just, I like this team. And so around that time when I was watching that bowl game, watching them get absolutely pummeled, I remember thinking like, just like a little throwaway thought. I was like, hmm, maybe one day it would be fun to go to a game there. You know, I've played so many games at the stadium. I've won so many games against big powerhouse schools here. It'd be fun to go sometime. Then a decade later, in between many other trips, I had gone on and thanks to an unused American Airlines travel voucher, I found my window and I booked a trip to Louisiana Monroe to see a football game. No matter who I talked to, it really seemed like my journey was unprecedented. <laughs> it didn't seem like this was a pilgrimage that many people were excited to make, but I was, and I did. But being there, I can't explain it. It was surreal. It's hard to explain, and I think I'm only gonna sound stupid trying to, but it's weird to finally exist in a spot that you've only seen in video games or on media or heard about, but you've never known anybody from there. You've never even like physically seen a person who said they're from there. It just makes you feel weird because you're like, oh, this place has always existed. And I'm only here for a moment in time interacting with it. And when I leave, it's going to continue to exist. And all these people have lives here. And like, I know that that's universal. That's a thing that exists everywhere. But every time you think about it and you experience it in a new place, it just makes you feel so small and so weird. And I just could not shake that feeling. As for the game itself, they were matched up with Coastal Carolina, the Chanticleers. This team is very good. They're new to the Sunbelt Conference. They joined in, I think, 2017. Uh, and coming to this game, they were 5-0, so didn't seem like a very favorable matchup for ULM. ULM at the time was 2-2 two two coming to the game, so they had a couple big wins, including one against Lafayette, their big rival, but, uh, you know, this seemed like an uphill battle. When I got dropped off at the game, I was dropped off at the library, which is across the bayou from the stadium. It's the first time I've ever seen a bayou in real life, ever been across a bayou cool life experiences. And I was especially surprised to see that there was a very lively tailgate village just outside of the stadium. When I see it in videos and highlights and stuff like that, it never looks like it's too well attended, but it seems like there are a lot of people there who really care about it and get into it, which is cool. Once inside the stadium, I picked up a couple of t-shirts, including this one, Go Warhawks. Uh, I got a cheese pizza from a place called Johnny's Pizza House, which is apparently a local chain to Louisiana. It was the worst pizza I've ever had. Uh, and then I found my seat. I had a great seat or about the 30 yard line, like six rows up. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. Nice night. And it was perfect. Unfortunately, while the crowd was lively and a lot of people were very active and cheering on their team and like aggressively so, there was a like small minority of fans who were maybe a bit too caught in the past with the former name of the team that I mentioned previously. They were very, very into it, as you can see here in this video. And while not everyone was as spirited as this guy, just about everyone took part in one of those tomahawk chop chants that you'll see at like Atlanta Brave games, uh, Kansas City Chief games, or Florida State Seminole games. And that's a little uh, not not the best. But yeah, the atmosphere was great. It was fun to be at a game for the first time. It was cool to see the stadium and see the team. And um, they lost. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you expected. They were one star school for a reason. They did make it a close game. But uh, yeah, that's basically the story of how I went to Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, I didn't really take much footage there because I don't feel comfortable recording stuff in public, but um, it was fun. Thank you, bye.